The key is some kind of emix illusion, I'd guess. So let's continue the verse in G minor. Hi, this video is part of an analysis series that I dedicate to several Nick Kershaw songs that haven't fit into one of my previous videos yet, but nevertheless are worth having a closer look at. Time for a closer look. So where were we? What's the with your ah yes. What's the with the way you First song standard 151 progression. What you doing with that, spoon? that very nice sound is a 7 sus4 chord over the 6 scale degree. You could use it as a tool to modulate to A flat minor now. But it's also quite nice with the G minor follow up. Since both the 4th and the 7th of the E flat chord become a kind of leading note, reaching back to the home key via semitone. Also nice that despite of the very clear minor scale structure of this chord progression, Nick touches on the Dorian side of things briefly before the chorus. This again broadens the spectrum of pitches within the harmony of a very basic verse structure. We get everything from D flat to E natural. So far so good. So this unison D serves the linking function between the G minor verse and the E mixolydian chorus. Which works really well, since when only looking at the root of these three chords, this is a very typical progression in G major. Again, interpreting one of the chords as coming from a major or minor variant of the key is what modal mixture is all about. See my video on what the papers say and to learn more about this term. It's extra nice since we're about to learn that the chorus isn't in E mixolydian throughout. The E chord turns out to be the preparation for a cadence into A minor. And I can't state enough what a great little moment this is and how hauntingly sweet it sounds. Because the melody from before even suggested a kind of cadence, but it forced you into believing that the one and only resolution can be a major. A minor is such a nice surprise that is still logical for the 5-1 relation and unexpected for the minor instead of major at the same time. And even this is only the tonic for one moment because then there's a swift secondary dominant into G major becoming E minor, which then is turned into E major to start another chorus round. And like so many times before now, the ending of the second round will be different. Now the jaunty little A minor cadence is substituted through E major's flat 6 scale degree with a 7th. And this is followed by an E flat major 7. From where we can get back to the E mixolydian and the G minor verse key by putting the flat six chords of the two respective keys together in this way, it becomes clear that Nick doesn't randomly throw them together, but there's a certain concept for the key changes of a whole song. In this case, the flat six scale degree. Also, in the mixolydian context, this chord can very well serve the function as a flat seven scale degree. And at the end of the interlude, Nick makes use of it to start the chorus section in F mixolydian, i.e. a semitone higher than the previous ones. Alright, the tension rises to a new level, but how can it get any cooler than this minor variant cadence? Well, you can imagine it can get even cooler. When you only hear this very first phrase, even though I think of you. How would you end it? G sharp minor or B major could serve as relatively expected outcomes. Life goes on. Life goes on. Even A major. Life goes on. But by replacing them with a dead straightforward A minor chord. I doubt it. <laughs> Life goes on. You immediately can feel all the despair and disappointment that is about to be covered in this song.
I will call these types of cadences where you are forced to expect a major outcome through the preceding accidentals, but then get the corresponding minor variant, a disappointment cadence from now on. Having such a disappointment cadence at the very opening sets the tone for a whole song. And it is very sad indeed, judging from the use of a 4th scale degree with 7th and 9th. But there might also be slight chances of hope From day to day. when returning to the 4th scale degree, this time with a lush sounding major 7 9th chord. From day to or take the fact that the second time there's a B flat major chord instead of F major, so you get a stronger, maybe more comforting sound, I'm sure I see your smile. which then is followed by another minor 7 9th sound. All of this is to show that Nick in this song very carefully arranges the chords to support the very gloomy feeling of the text. I don't talk about lyrics on this channel very often, but in this case not even I can get around mentioning that these harmonies were consciously selected to highlight the deep grief and the light spark of hope that both describe the singer's situation at the same time. And this is even more true when the chorus starts. This is another case where we are forced to expect everything but this parallel minor variant. Sometimes. The accidentals from the previous bars pointed out such a clear resolution to F major. I'm sure I see your smile. It is even supported by this very short and probably unintentional denatural that nobody, nobody expects the F minor chord at this place. And in combination with the fact that this time the secondary dominant is in its first inversion with a very shaky semitone step in the bass, this is the most disappointing disappointment cadence so far. This song might be criminally underappreciated. And sorry to all my viewers who love Radio Musicola, but that was harmonically already the most exciting adventure from this album. But I'm sure that all of us who had listened to the song before had this Sometimes. as their most characteristic sound experience in their memory. And how genius it is that you're not left alone with this disappointment resolution for too long, but the bass through the same type of motion Sometimes crawls its way up towards the relative major chord and even some subdominant territory, thereby making the great amount of disappointment suffered before a little more bearable. Coming back to the verse is also designed quite intelligently. First, the gradual upwards motion from before is continued to this very lush sounding half diminished chord until this G flat major chord, which within the context of F minor also is another additional flat. If enharmonically exchanged, this chord can provide a way back to the intro melody in the role of a dominant. And from here on we're heading back into the first disappointment cadence from the beginning. Or when arriving here the second time throughout the whole song. Honestly, this song might be even more underappreciated than I thought before. Just the fact that the disappointment cadence now finally is resolved the way we expected it the very first time. Even A major. I don't know what to feel right now. I am totally emotionally uncaptured. Is it hope that everything will get better from you? After so many disappointment cadence, it doesn't feel right anymore, does it? I am at least secretly prepared for the next disappointment to happen. I really am not sure whether to feel hopeful or sad over the expected new disappointment that finally is about to happen when returning to the verse section. Although this time it's not as clear of a break as before. <sighs> yes, I am really torn between totally different feelings and I don't know how to conclude the analysis of this song. The only thing that I know for sure is that it is a perfect example of how to carefully use harmony to underline the emotion of your lyrics. Sometimes. 